How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Creator's Process. As you know, my name is Jaden, and right next to me I have Brian. How are you doing today, man? Pretty good, thanks Jaden. That's good, that's very good. Thanks for dropping over. Oh, thank you for inviting me into your amazing studio. There's some amazing works around here. I was, yeah, very overwhelmed when I came in. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's taken a long time to get to this. Um, uh, where we're actually talking now it used to be a collection of crappy, rusty old sheds. Oh, uh, wow. The place was just amazing. But uh, the day that my 14 year old daughter yelled out and said the toilet's just fallen through the floor, that's when I thought time, oh, wow. <laughs> time to renovate. So, it, it, it's probably time to do that. <laughs> yeah, so I met this really nice Italian builder called Joe, uh, semi retired. And he said, yep, I can do it. No one else said they could do it. So he built the whole space. And uh, without him, it wouldn't be here. So it's just it's just a purpose-built space, particularly for painting and drawing and having groups in. So That's amazing. Like, it yeah. looks incredible. It looks like a proper art studio that you'd come into yeah. for yeah. an artist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm quite happy with the way it works. Occasionally you think, I should have made it bigger, but... <laughs> what can you do? I mean, yeah, I don't think you can get any bigger than this. Like, it's well spaced out oh. and everything, so it's really nice. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we have to wait for a you know, government grant from Scotty yeah. from marketing. He could maybe drop us you know, money. <laughs> if that doesn't happen, it's not going to happen. Oh, yeah. We'll make do with this. We can only hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Uh, so I guess for everyone watching, uh, so what do you do with yourself when, uh, uh, when it comes to the arts? Well, I'm pr pretty much interested in everything. Uh, I'm, I'm a photographer as well as a sculptor. Uh, I draw, I paint, uh, I'm a printmaker. Yeah, so pretty much everything. So I use most mediums, um, but particularly oil painting and watercolour. Yeah. Uh, I don't really do acrylics anymore. When I was a teenager, I was really good at acrylics but something has slipped in the brain and I just don't seem to be able to use them anymore. Yeah. Very happy with watercolour and oil uh, and you know, still go out and photograph stuff so as right well. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have like all your feet in all these different mediums in a way? Yeah, 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 and you just get sick of them. I mean, you know, the painting behind us, when you're looking at a really big artwork, you can kind of go, after all you go, I'm really bored with this and you go, going to go to a pub, see a band or whatever uh, and you just want to leave it alone and um, I just think it's just like anything in life. If you just attack it in sections, you eventually will get to the end of it. So, okay. so I leave that alone. I might do a small watercolor or something else, or draw. I mean, I've always drawn. Um, we've got the regular group that comes here every Wednesday, and uh, with a different model each week, mm -hmm. and um, to just get together, get some drawing done. So, yeah, no, that's yeah. awesome. So you like to revisit artworks over time like sometimes if you don't feel inspired to work on it you kind of go away from it and then yeah, come yeah. back when you feel inspired to use yeah, it yeah come back from it you know and I, I know it sounds weird but you know sometimes you go I just don't want to draw a naked person this week I've had enough of it but in most weeks you go yeah, yeah. You know, who's who's the model this week oh it's someone we haven't seen before and that has been a good thing about being on Instagram and being on Facebook is because I get models contacting me. People say to me, where do you get these models from? And I go, well, they actually contact me these days. So I haven't actually had that problem. Oh, that's always, so yeah. it's always, you have like four people for your class. Yeah. You always have a yeah. number of people coming in and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, it's usually, you know, six to eight people. That's so good, yeah. just like, it's a non-profit organisation because once you pay the model, you've, you've, you know, you're you paying for the electricity, etc. Mm -hmm. And there's little left over. But then occasionally it goes nuts. Like last week, there were 13 people here. Wow. It was a tight squeeze, but we got them all in. So there you go. So. Well, it seems like a really good turnout for that. That was uh, Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I just get a chance to um, play my um, CDs and my vinyl. So I like to say, you know, go somewhere else and you'll get uh, Ian with his Spotify or whatever. Um, but no Spotify here, uh, no downloading. It's very, very uh, retro. Also. Um, yep. So, and people go, gee, you know, it's, I love drawing vinyl. Drawing with vinyl looks great. So, there you are. Nothing wrong with a bit of old school. Exactly. And I think it's like starting vinyls and now starting to come back in. Well, yeah, look, I, I've actually, a friend of mine was a great printmaker. 
she used to be involved with uh, Brunswick Council, mm -hmm. and she did this etching called The Death of the LP. And that, that was 1990, and we all thought, that's going to be it, you know? Yeah. And, of course, it's turned, it's gone totally the other way. You, you walk into JB Hi-Fi these days, and you've got stacks and stacks of vinyl. Mm -hmm. uh, and all the new bands um, go, oh, we've got to have that released on vinyl. Yeah. yeah. So... It's always yeah. very interesting, isn't it, to it see is, the yeah. old school come back. Yeah, but yeah, because you know, some of my uh, vintage, you know, because you're looking at people and they're doing all this downloading and Spotify and all these other platforms, and you kind of go, I don't know about that, but you know that it's the common, it's it's where people are at these days. Yeah, a lot of people. So yeah, that's it. You yeah, know, just yeah. going with the trends, going with the vibes. And, yeah, yeah. And um, so I guess you know when. You said that you do all these different areas of art. Like, yeah. I guess, how long ago did you start uh, oh, in well, art? Uh, well, pro I can trace it back to somewhere around the age of five or six. Wow. Uh, and um, someone, I know it was my mother or my father, gave me a little paint box. And I, I do not remember what I did. Uh, there is no, My mother used to throw out all my pictures, so there's mm. nothing... There's nothing saved from that time. But obviously, I enjoyed it and just kept it going. And a key thing that happened when I was at primary school, it was like first grade, and it was Christmas. And I just remember the teacher saying, Brian's going to go up to the blackboard and he's going to draw with chalk a Christmas tree with decorations because it was obviously they couldn't afford them back then. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, I think, well, why did she pick me out? So obviously... You must have noticed something back then. So, mm. yeah, so that's an interesting thing that you remember from yeah. then. And then just going through um, primary school and high school, um, you're constantly just drawing people, you know. And the, the thing, nearly all people would say this if, they, if they're an artist now. I used to draw these people and people would say, who's that you're drawing? Is that me? Is that the girl? <laughs> and you go, no, they're, they're imaginary people. They don't exist. Yeah. What? what? What do you mean? So, but I did actually um, seek out doing likenesses and stuff. So I used to um, draw all the people, and I could, you know, somewhere in the house is, is an old um, school magazine, and I used to get involved with that. So there's like there's a page of teachers and students' pictures that I did somewhere in the mid '60s. So wow. Yep. So and that was during the time when um, I got into photography. You know, uh, my mother decided to take my brother and I to Tasmania. I, m I must have said, oh, you, there's any cameras in the house? It's on only the old brownie box camera. So, you know, and I said, can you still get film for that? Went down to the chemist, you could still get film. So wow. I took my first photos on this brownie box camera going around Tasmania. And uh, when I came back, I thought, well, that camera was pretty crappy. So I started saving up. Um, for a better one, because I worked in my parents' shop and I'd earn so much money per customer, you get five cents um, yeah. a cup or whatever it was. So you collect all the money and uh, you wind up, well, A, I bought records, of course, but apart from that, I saved up for better cameras and gradually got a better and better camera. So I had a, a lovely Practica 4, which I unfortunately misplaced. Uh, but then um, it sort of moved on to, and then I moved on to Pentaxes, uh, which is when I started going to art school. Yeah, the Pentax was a great camera for as an all-rounder. And as I've discovered, even some of the best rock photographers in Australia, like Colin Beard, who was the key photographer of GoSet, he used the Asari Pentax. So there you go. Yeah, so um, yeah, I had my own dark room at home, and... Uh, taught uh, a good friend of mine, Andrew, to take photos, and he went on to become a world-famous photographer, still is. Wow, so awesome. there you go. So, um, but all along, I was still interested in the art, so I did a graphic design course at Swinburne, um, when it was in Hawthorne. Having done that course, and I worked as a graphic designer for about seven or eight years. Uh, but my wife of the time said to me, oh, you're not going to be happy until you go and do fine art. Uh, why don't you go back and do printmaking? So I went back and did printmaking, which was really good, etching, uh, screen printing, a bit of lithography. So I've got some, a uh, couple of large early screen prints over there, which you can have a look at. Yeah, so, so. Mm. That's quite a, quite a history right there. Seems yeah. like art has been very... Uh, 
much in your life for a long time. So you've yeah, like always yeah. been at heart an artist. That's right. Yeah. So you know, I sort of look. I, I, I like most art. You know, you read about people who went to art school and they, you know, they finally formed a band. Now, you know, several uh, of Melbourne's top you know, rock stars of the year, they were all at art school, including a couple mm. with me. And you think, well, you know, they, they did, they actually achieved it. They got the guitar out or they started singing. Mm -hmm. uh, but it just didn't happen for me. So, you mm. know, one of my frustrations, but <laughs> I'm working on it. But there you go. It's a, it's a work progress. It's a work in progress, <laughs> that part. Um, but yeah, I think it's is that thing, um, it's probably the same, same whether it's a mu musician who usually find, you know, got their first guitar when they were 10 or something, or if you're an artist, you, that they've started very young and it's always there in, um, in their history. Mm. Uh, one of the best things that happened to me was when I had my first exhibition, uh, the Milk Bar Show, I didn't actually know who went to it because I wasn't there all the time. Uh, but a few years later, I was working at Heidi Gal Gallery mm. um, and this old guy came up to me and I thought, gee, you look familiar. And he said, oh, it's Bob Francis. And Bob Francis was the head of, of the art school, the design wow. component, back in the 70s. So, and I'm talking, so it's like 35 years since I'd seen him. And he said, uh, you know, I went, went and saw your show, the Milk Bar Show, I think it's fantastic. And I said, well, haven't I disappointed you because I didn't stay doing graphics? He said, oh, no, no. Most of, most people that do it actually they're much more talented than that, and <laughs> some of them progress. So glad to see that you Kept got going. back to it. So mm, so that wow. was that was great. So yeah, that would have been quite a very special moment. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, um, Bob's passed on now, and um, yeah, the, quite a bit of few people. Um, but you know, it's a long time ago since I was first at art school. So yeah, um, but you pick up stuff from people all along you know you have your heroes people that you admire and you just try and go and what can i do that what well, doesn't look like their work but yeah so, you know is as strong as what they did so mm. kind of find inspiration through their work but then also show that you were inspired by their work through yeah, their yeah. own artwork yeah yeah and you know certainly probably people look at my art school work and i'll go oh that looks like such and such or this artist or that artist and, well, certainly there are influences there, but, uh, um, well, I'd like to think that now the work is, is kind of just my work. Hmm. I went through a big abstract phase in from the 80s to the, about 2000, hmm. so all my work was quite abstracted, so, but then I've gone back towards realism, and you look at a lot of artist careers and, you know, it ebbs and flows between real, realism and abstraction, etc. So, wow. there's a lot of abstract ideas I notice in uh, photography on Instagram these days. Um, so, which is interesting. So, it's interesting when movements come back, like over time. Like, yeah, you know, it's one of these things where some movements kind of, you know, they're not there, but then years later they come back up. Just yep. there's a movement where it just comes back up. It's always interesting when you see that happen. <laughs> Yeah, well, again, getting back to movements, um, um, my heroes in Australian art have been the iconoclasts who basically have gone, no, I'm going to do my own thing, and I'm, I'm, you can't, you won't be calling me a cubist or <laughs> I'm not a surrealist or whatever, you know. So, um, and these people just had their own unique style. Um, okay. Yeah, people like Charles Blackman and uh, John Percival and uh, John Brack. Oh, um, yeah. So. Yeah. All from the, you know, they started following on from the war. That a lot of them had bad experiences in the Second World War. Um, but there was a bit of um, government support back then to actually provide artists with a means to actually make a career. So people like Brack, who'd been in the army, he was actually, you know, financially helped on a certain degree to get into teaching, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's so many people that you you meet who go, oh, you know, I was at art school and, you know, in fact, I, I have a friend who's even older than me and he goes, oh, I was at art school and John Brack was my teacher and he threw me out of the class one day because I was just a man maniac and, you know, and I gave him such a hard time. So oh, wow. I said, well, you know, these things can happen, but yeah. So I met him a couple of times when he's very, very old. 
Oh, wow. And uh, it's very interesting because you get those stories. Of, I worked at a couple of art shops. <laughs> and um, I was at this art shop and they said, oh, oh um, you know, Charles Blackman comes in and, uh, and a few guys from Sydney and uh, oh, John Brack comes in too. I said, oh, so, you know, that's interesting. He said, they said, oh, but he doesn't buy much. <laughs> oh, all right. So, yeah, one of Australia's most famous artists, well, what does he buy? Uh, he usually buys like one brush and two tubes of paint, or maybe two brushes and one tube of paint. I said, you're kidding. So, said, yeah, yeah, you wait and see, one day it'll happen. So, sure enough, one day he shuffled in with his walking stick. And, oh, young man, I'll, I'll just have a look around the shop. And off he went and came back. And sure enough, he had like maybe two brushes and two tubes of paint. <laughs> I just looked at him and he looked at me and said, you know, listen, young man, you know, I could die tomorrow. Why do I need to spend money on paint? So, very, very funny. So, the, the older they get, they've got the more character they've got. So. More of a funny um, personality they have yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I've met a few personalities. I, I worked with um, Howard Arkley, um, who, of course, these days is a famous artist, but... To me, he was just a maniac when I met him. He was just, okay. like, wow. you know, very, very totally over the top. I, I remember thinking, now this is this guy is the definition of a way out eccentric artist. And um, Howard never, never let you down. So okay, yeah. So wow. very interesting character. So better not say any more because you know someone that's might okay. sue me. But that that gives you a general idea. No, that's um, all good. That's yeah. all good. That's it. Seems like you've um, had a lot of uh, history with working with. Uh, oh, just meeting a lot of yeah, amazing yeah. artists. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Um, in the early two thousands, um, I kind of I got to that point where I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I thought maybe I needed to get a real job and forget about art. No. I tried a few things. I, I tried to do a bit of retraining in architecture because I've got a big interest in architecture. Uh, but uh, that came to nothing again for the second time. And so then I thought, well, what else could I do? And then I thought, volunteer at a gallery. So I knew that Heidi out at Berlin was always looking for volunteers. So I went out there and I joined them in 2002 and was there for like about nine years. But you just meet so many people out there, so many artists, and quite a few of them have passed on, um, and photographers, um, and just people in the arts generally. So, and you just get connect, you reconnect with people you might might have known or seen for a really long time. So, yeah. so Heidi was good. Um, I I was away from there for some years, but recently gone back. So, um, so I do a bit of volunteering there every couple of weeks. So, wow. which is good, and it. You know, pretty much for sure, something is going to happen, which is going to be amazing. A good friend of mine I worked with, uh, Penny, uh, she's recently retired from there, but you know, the, the story that no one can beat from her was um, she was in the Heidi Cottage, just um, being the person in charge. On the day, the door opens, in comes a guest <laughs> and decides to get talking and Penny's jaw dropped, um, but she regained her composure and had a one hour conversation with David Byrne uh, so, from Talking Heads. So, yes. Yep, so that's the kind of people that pop in to yeah, yeah. Heidi Gallery, so you just don't know. And that guy Kevin that's always looking at um, um, new buildings in England, um, he was there last year, um, <laughs> just before COVID. So. Uh, I didn't catch up with him. He, I wasn't there that day, but yeah. So, and people they do this on the spur of the moment. Uh, maybe their mind is just say, "You want to go somewhere different? Come out to fifteen acres of, of parklands and check out um, the artwork." So, wow. There you go. So, it seemed yeah. like that when you said that you weren't too sure of what you wanted to do, and then you took a break, and then you kind of it seemed like. It, you just get caught, kept calling back to come, going to art. It seems like art's something that... Well, you sort of yeah. keep, you keep thinking, well, because, you know, you're living on the smell of an oily rag for so long, mm. and you think, oh, I've got to make some real money. And during that period, I, mean, I remember going to uh, a real estate agent and saying, you know, get a job as a real estate agent. At the time, I was, you know, busy painting milk bars, and the guy goes, what, what do you do when you're not looking for jobs? And I said, well, I've been painting these milk bars, and he goes, can I have a look? So I, sh I showed him and uh, 
eventually just wrote a letter saying, um, your talent lies elsewhere other than trying to flog real estate. Oh, yep. that's nice. So there you are. So, oh, that's um, amazing. But yeah, but it is like most artists will acknowledge, um, uh, once you get out of the graphic design scene and um, mm. you know, you're scratching around for a job, uh, it can be difficult. There's just, you do live on the smell of an oily rag, so. Yeah, you're just yeah. always in the art form. It's kind of something you yeah. just never yeah. really, you're, you can't, it's always going to be a part of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. for a long time. Yeah, you know, you just, you have to, you still have to find something else to pay the bills. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as you do. <laughs> Yeah. But, um, so I guess when it comes to, like, obviously you said that you do photograph milk bars, you know, and all that sort of thing. Uh, what are I mainly some... paint them, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, what are your other themes that you like to focus on? Well, there's the, the nude, um, has always been a big theme. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, the urban landscape. Um, okay. with the urban landscape, I was actually looking at that, um, in an abstracted sense for quite some time. So that was like things in the street, a hole in the road, the debris that workers have left behind. So I'd be looking at that and going, now that, that actually makes a good abstract image, I'll just muck around with that. So but then gradually over time it's become more realistic. So I've, I've gone up over to stuff like that. But you know, I'm the kind of person that if I'm painting a landscape, it's kind of got to have a shed in it. I just, yeah. if it's just got bush, I mean, oh, there's plenty of artists who've done that really yeah, well. Yeah, um, You know, Fred Williams, probably Australia's most famous mm -hmm. exponent of the landscape, and he didn't worry about any sheds or anything, but I just, you know, I kind of need, like, a tractor or someone's left an old oil tank somewhere on the ground or whatever. Then I kind of relate to it, so. So it's kind of like in the, obviously, the landscape, you want a bit of, like, the some, like a man-made thing, like a shed or a tractor or yeah, something. Yeah, like. if, if someone's wearing, like, if a model's got fussy uh, jacket on, uh, like a robe, I'll just do it as a kind of a quick squeal. Uh, yeah. Whereas yeah. you'll see uh, other artists and they'll deliberately take their time and really work on it and, and get it um, in great detail. Yesterday we had uh, model Owen uh, oh, yeah. at um, Jada's uh, popcorn and he had on this robe, it was blue and white and it was an de de incredibly detailed pattern. And I just went, there's a series of lines on it, so yeah. that, so it's, it's that thing about, uh, you go, oh, I can't be bothered doing that. So it actually seems like, you know, it's like, in a way, it's your own interpretation of what you see. Yeah. And, seeing, yeah. and I think that's definitely important with any artwork, yeah. you know, because mm -hmm. you, when you're seeing the artwork, it's the artist's interpretation of what they see and what other people see is not always what others will perceive as well. And I yeah. think it's, yeah. As they say, it's the artist's interpretation. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, everyone, there's, there's so many different ways of, of, of looking at these things, particularly, you know, when you look at Instagram and you look at what people are doing with the nude, there's so many different ways to approach it. And, yeah, a lot of interesting things are done photographically. I've never really done much with um, photographing the nude. I've done a little bit, but um, I'm more happy to work with it as a painted form. So... Mm. Yeah, that's fair enough, and I think it's, you know, your preferred medium. As yeah, you yeah, yeah, exactly. But, um, you know, there's other themes. I mean, I, I do like stuff to do with the water. Usually, I mean, done stuff like uh, the Yarra at Studley Park um, as a screen print, and I've also done, like, reviews um, on Sydney Harbour. Uh, but generally, you find, again, there, there's a shed involved. So a picture I've got just over there is the Abbotsford Boat Shed, which is the last remaining boat shed on Sydney Harbour. Wow. So, and that's like about 40 minutes by ferry out of the centre of Sydney, um, not far from where they had the 2000 Olympics. Um, wow. But it's a fascinating building and, you know, to actually see people working on different areas of boat there, it's quite good to do. You've got, literally got to get off the ferry though to check it out because uh, it just zoops past. Jeez, very quickly. As it does, so yeah. I go up to Sydney uh, every so often to check it out. Um, I also go to Tasmania a lot. But of course, you know, we've had a, a almost a year now of restricted yeah. travel. And we've still got, yeah. you know, states that all of a sudden decide to close down. So that's, you know, got a bearing on, on travel. I had to take my oldest son to the airport this morning. He sell, sells art materials, so you've got to go to Adelaide for that. 
I said to him, I hope you've got a plan for if the SA Premier just decides to shut down the border. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, well, hopefully you won't be stuck there. Well, well yeah, hopefully by now. Yeah, that, that, that's really yeah. awesome and seems, yeah, like you've, you've had a bit of a travel behind you and you've a bit of history behind yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, the trap the trap was good because it, it came very late in life, uh, you know. I was in my late 50s when I finally went overseas at the urging of volunteers from Heidi. They said, what do you mean you haven't travelled? What are you, nuts? As they say. And so I said, oh, okay, maybe, you know. But, uh, yeah, when you first land overseas, like like Heathrow, I, I was kind of really freaking out. But fortunately, I was met by one of my former students who had moved to England and married an English guy. So um, she picked me up and we did this long-winded thing where you you know, you're on the train and then you're in the underground oh, yeah. and then you're in central London, then you go out. So they lived in central England, they lived in Northamptonshire. So we went up there and um, I spent some time up there. And again, there it relates back to creativity and all that because Northamptonshire was the centre of the, of the boot making industry in England for a long time. A lot of it's closed down now, but that film, Kinky Boots, which you may, oh, not, yes, may yes. not be familiar with, yes. is set in Northampton Chimes. So, oh, wow. Yep. Uh, and there are other links to the creative things in the area. The uh, Scottish architect who basically um, did these amazing things all around Glasgow, the only building he did uh, in England was basically in Northampton. So, and I went to visit it. It's a house museum now. It's called 78 Derngate. And yeah. uh, if you're into architecture and art of our period, he was absolutely amazing. So wow. did that as well. And yeah, just sort of soaked in soaked in the place and went to, did a two-week trip to Italy. Just went all over Italy. And that's when I first saw Venice. Beautiful um, city. 36 hours in Venice. The tour wow. director said, you know, we've, we've been in Venice for, for three hours. How would you all like to go to Murano and see some glass blowing? I said, no way, I'm staying here. So I stayed here and wandered all around the city for all the day and uh, went to the Piggy Guggenheim Museum, which is amazing. I said to myself, well, if I would want to come back to anywhere in Europe to paint, it would be Venice. Oh. So, and, and then some years later, I had the opportunity. So. Wow. Well, it's where Da Vinci spent most of his life uh, on, yeah. in Venice. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, lots of famous architects. Mm. Um, Andrea Palladio, one yeah. of my favourite architects, because uh, you know there's a church there, other buildings. So, so and on the recent trip in 2017, I did go to Vicenza and checked out a few more of uh, Palladio's buildings. Mm -hmm which are great. But yeah, they're, they're pretty astounding. And I didn't actually sit down with a sketchbook and sketch them or anything, but just generally, um, just very, very inspiring. I mean, really, the only problem with Italy is is you get an overload of churches. After all, you go, oh, I don't want to see any more Baroque churches. Yeah, there's that's a lot of them. Them. <laughs> But if you can, again, take a break um, hmm. and come back to it. So I spent a week in Paris and that was quite inspiring too. But again, you just don't have enough time to really concentrate. So yeah. if and when we ever are allowed to travel again, I wouldn't mind going back there and taking the watercolours. Very so, beautiful place, Paris. But yeah, but I just... Yeah, we just don't know. Things are so uh, uncertain. We never know. So hopefully, fingers exactly. crossed, eventually you'll be able to go back there yeah, and do yeah. some more art down that way. That would, would be, be good. Really cool. Would be good. Well, uh, you you sound confident, so I'm pleased about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> there was you know, like I just think there was a time before this was all happened, so there has to be an aftermath, you know. Yeah. It's always an aftermath, you know. Yeah. It, no matter when that will be, it will come eventually. So <laughs> you know, hopefully. But you know, I, I just try and be optimistic about most of yeah, yeah most of it. You know, it is hard times, but you know we'll get through it at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, we've uh, we're certainly way ahead of uh, Europe at this point in time. Yeah. So, no, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> we're in a good place where we don't have many yeah. cases right now. So we're yeah. and we're always good on contact tracing. It's mm -hmm. really good. Yeah. We get to hang out and talk about that's time. right. That's yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yep. Um, yes. Um, because certainly, uh, you know, there was that terrible time in March when all of the life models contacted me in one week and said, oh, Brian, I can't come to your drawing group. Uh, and 
it's all closed down. So yeah, yeah. So everything just shut down. Yeah, it was quickly. pretty frustrating. So oh, I think it was for everyone. <laughs> but at least with painting and drawing, you can Absolutely. keep doing it on your own. So mm. there is that. So. That's it. You know, you're always probably uh, working on more stuff and working on... Yeah, there's, there's always something, you know, and sometimes I will have got halfway through a picture and then forgotten about it, and so I can go, yeah, that one, I've got to finish that one. Yeah, that's it, you know, just reworking on new works, yeah, old yeah. works. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, but I'm always working on stuff that I got halfway through and didn't finish it, so... Ah, yeah, awesome, man. So, and yeah. uh, I guess for our final question, what are, you, what are your future projects going to be? Uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm really pleased that uh, during COVID, I had an association form with, uh, with a gallery and it was through my interest in John Brack. I wanted to buy an affordable John Brack uh, print. Wow. Uh, and when the print arrived, uh, it was delivered by uh, a woman who runs one of Melbourne's top galleries. And she said, well, can I take some of your work with me? And so we have an association now. So nice. that's that's really good because I mean I have been associated with um, some pretty good galleries over mm -hmm. the years but the galleries fall by the wayside for various reasons um, mm -hmm. and most artists they'll say to you well I started at such and such a place but you know, over time that closed down then I moved to another one etc but um, no I'm quite pleased and it's very important for an artist that the person that wants to show your work actually likes it yeah. And, and really wants to support you. So there's no right. point just knocking on the door and going, hey, look at me, I'm fantastic. And yeah. you go, yeah, you're a wanker. So <laughs> disappeared. So nice. yeah. So that's pr probably the big thing. Uh, I'm pleased that my son has returned to live here with me at the moment, which is good because he's been very helpful. Uh, and uh, so the list of life models who've been living here has gone down to zero at the moment, So mm. which is good. So, oh, that's awesome. Sounds like you've got some good stuff coming up. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. There's always something on the go, you know. Yeah. So, um, and there's, particularly these days in Melbourne, there's people doing stuff. Uh, you've got uh, Jean-Luc Syndicus, who's doing very, lots of things. He's been doing them at Abbotsford, and mm -hmm. he's changed the name of his business now, but yeah. he's still running stuff. And you've got uh, Jada also um, doing stuff and changing her themes, etc. So that's, that's good. I mean, I'm not much of a theme person myself, but it's good to have that other place you can go to and um, just see what other people think of and they've got other ideas, so. Yeah, sounds good. Is there, yeah. like, for your uh, new association that you've created, is yeah. there anywhere where people can check it out? Like, is there Yeah, anywhere? that's uh, Bridget McDonald Gallery, which yeah. is uh, on the corner of Rathdown and Faraday Street. Uh, so yeah, they've got my work there at the moment and uh, I'll be seeing Bridget in a couple of weeks to bring a bit, fair bit of what is here today will be going down to wow. her gallery because she's wrapped in it and um, she has got people that want to purchase it so which it's is really exciting cool. congratulations yeah. that's yeah. awesome yeah thanks it was no, a very very pleasant surprise and all because of my obsession with John Brack and thinking <laughs> this print is actually affordable so so uh. that was good that's fantastic. Well, I yeah. wish you luck on all your future projects. And Thanks, Jade. And I want to say a big thank you for inviting me into your studio just to talk to you about your incredible art. Like, there's just so many amazing works around here and just to talk about your inspirations and your journey through yeah. this community. It's absolutely, it was really interesting. No, it's, it's been great. A uh, good process. It's, um, you know, I'm someone who loves being on the other side of the camera and I'm usually a nervous wreck. Uh, so, you know, uh, people have to catch me off guard to get a decent photo. So it's been a, a good experience to actually be forced to talk about it. Oh, so, be good. Uh, I remember. <laughs> it's, um, so yeah, everyone watching, thank you so much for watching. If you wanted to check out Brian's works, I will leave links to everything, uh, his new gallery, so you can go and check out his work. Uh, I'll leave it all in the video link below. Uh, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next episode.